Hi, I'm Dennis, and in this video I will show you how I made this koi fish out of a solid piece of plywood using three-sided CNC carving with the shape logo. I created this 3D koi fish in mesh mixer and I wanted to make it as big as my Shape Oco XXL with HTZ upgrade can handle from a solid piece of stock, so no tiling or gluing individually carved layers on top of each other. For most 3D projects, the X width and the Y length are not really limiting factors, but the Z height is, due to the distance between the CNC bed and the X rail, or the bottom of the Z gantry. So how can you carve something that is thicker than what would normally fit in between? Let's have a closer look at the koi fish that I designed. When looking at it from the front, the overall shape of the koi is more like a triangle than a rectangle. If I would route this from the top and the bottom, then the vertical sides of the body and the back and tail fins won't have much detail, as they will be carved with the flat side of the ball nose bit. Also, when cutting in deep areas, the side of the DeWalt router may bump into the body and vertical fins of the fish. Now, the good thing about a triangle is that the distance from its flat surfaces to its center are shorter than from its tips to its center. So, why not make use of that by only cutting into the flat sides of the triangle, which, in the case of this koi fish, are its 2, 6 and 10 o'clock sides. Keeping that in mind, the limitations that I had to work with are the distance between the highest and lowest Z position of the router, which I increased by upgrading to the HDZ, allowing 450 mm traveling distance from its highest to its lowest position. The maximum length of end mill and ball nose router bits that are available for benchtop CNC routers like the Shape Oco, which are these extra long end mill and ball nose bits from Amana Tool. These have a total length of 4 inch which allows for an approximately 80 mm carving depth. That's about half the traveling distance of the upgraded Z gantry. And the distance between the CNC bed and the lowest part of the X gantry, which is actually the bottom part of the Z gantry. And that distance is about 100 millimeters depending on the thickness of your CNC bed. I also needed to keep in mind that if cutting an upside down triangle with its flat side facing the router bit and the center of the triangle is at the height of the CNC bed surface, then the tip of the triangle will actually be far below the bed surface. So I designed a rotary mount with which I can carve stock from any desired angle and as many angles as needed by positioning the stock around the manual rotary B axis which runs in the Y direction. In the case of this koi fish, which has a triangular shape, it is a three-sided project. This concept of a rotary construction required me to make some changes to the CNC frame, as well as the bed. To be able to place a stock deeper than a CNC bed surface, I cut a hole in a spoil board and moved the center metal bar of the shape poker to the right, using the right side screw hole of the frame for the left side screw hole of the metal bar to open up as much space as possible without compromising its rigidity. I drilled holes into the CNC bed and then inserted T-nuts from the bottom up to fasten this frame. I made this frame from ever-built zinc plated square tubes of 1 inch thick with 5 16 inch punch holes that are spaced 1 inch apart. Because I plan to use 3 8 inch bolts, I had to slightly widen the existing holes with the drill press. I widened all holes along the length of the bars, so that I can choose different holes to change the distance between the front and back frame bars for clamping projects of different sizes. I also cut these triangles from quarter steel inch plates to hold the stock, using the small holes for screws to secure to the stock and the large holes to clamp the stock in between the front and the back bars of the frame. With this center hole, I can align the front and back of the stock in the frame, similar to the principles of a lathe. And then these holes are lined up with the holes of the front and the back frame bars for securing the stock to prevent it from rotating. And these additional holes allow me to not only rotate the stock around its center axis, but also move it up or down to virtually offset its rotational center. Finally, I created more space underneath the CNC bed by replacing the original legs with a sturdy construction to lift the entire CNC by 200 millimeters. So now that I have this rotary construction, I can go back to the koi fish that I made in mesh mixer to add 3D tabs and to translate each of its three sides into a toolpath. I added these 3D tabs pointing from the center outwards to the corners of the virtual triangle. 
I then made separate 3D STL files of the koi fish at their maximum carving depths for each of its 2, 6 and 10 o'clock positions. I calculated the X, Y and Z boundaries of the stock and koi fish in V-carve, allowing for only a few millimeters of space between the machine's new absolute limits and then imported the STL files to create the three roughing and three finishing toolpaths. Since the koi fish was the first 3D project I planned to do with the rotary setup, I want to do a test carve with 3 quarter inch sandy plywood from Home Depot. Based on the maximum size of the koi that I wanted to carve, I needed 13 layers of this 17.8 mm plywood to roughly compile a triangular stock of 267 mm wide with a thickness or height of 231 mm. I cut these so that the direction of the grain pattern alternates between the layers, as explained in another video where I show how a female torso. I glued all the pieces together and let them dry for two days. To attach the rotary triangles to the stock, I first needed to flatten the front and the back. I roughly marked the center of the stock and then used the small holes to screw the rotary triangles to the front and the back of the stock. I then mounted the stock in the frame using the big holes for the bolts to be able to rotate the stock around this new B axis and then fix the stock in one position using the other holes in the rotary triangles. Once nicely secured, each side was ready to be serviced one side at a time. I also created a pocket to reach maximum carving depth in the center of the stock to allow these extra long roughing and finishing bits from Amana tool to cut even deeper while retaining as much supporting stock material as possible on the sides. All right, enough talk. Let's get started. side is now done, but due to the limitations determined by the side walls, the router bit did not get all the way into this area over here. So I created an XRD toolpath specifically for this area, making sure that the sides of the router won't touch the walls or any of the 3D tabs.
the roughing curves are done, so now I'm going to do the finishing curves. After about 40 hours of carving, it's finally done. So now I can cut the tabs and take the koi fish out of what is left of the stock material. I'll add a few more tabs to the 3D design in Mesh Mixer to strengthen the fins for future carves, as they vibrated too much and I was afraid they might break off. As you can see here and here, the ball nose decided to wander off. That's because I initially chose an offset finishing path. But with a cutting edge of only half an inch, the smooth shaft of the bit bumped into the side of one of the tabs that was still a few millimeters thicker as it had only been cut with the roughing tool at that point. The gantry wheel slipped over the belt and I was too late to stop the machine. I changed all finishing tool paths from an offset to a raster pattern so that they follow the same path as the roughing pass. Lesson learned. For now, I'm just gonna sand down the tabs and smooth out these carving edges. I'm done with the sanding and I kind of like the light color of the wood so I'll finish it off with the transparent varnish. Well, not bad for a first try to test my rotary setup. There's still a few things I can improve, but I think it's ready for the next step, which is cutting a solid piece of wood, which I will encase in epoxy resin to create a triangular shaped stock material. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. <laughs>